The Coffee People podcast is presented by Rostar Coffee Packaging. Rostar is the digital printing company that makes custom printed packaging for coffee products. They create packaging that make even small roasters look like a really big deal. At Rostar.com, you'll find out about their fast turnaround time, high quality product, and low printing minimums. It's what separates them from the rest of the industry. Rostar will quickly become your favorite source for custom American-made product packaging. They work with small, mid, and large coffee roasters. So if you're ready to upgrade your coffee packaging, go to Rostar.com to learn more and connect with the team. Link in this podcast's show notes. Do you want to make a podcast? Check out Spotify for podcasters. Spotify's platform lets you easily make a new show, then distribute it around the world. You can even monetize your podcast. It's all in one place and it's free. It's Spotify for podcasters. Here's how it works. You use Spotify for podcasters to record and edit shows right from your phone or computer. You can literally start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Beyond the audio realm, Spotify for Podcasters also has video podcasting tools, not to mention the ability to connect directly with your podcast listeners. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including paid ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free. It all sounds pretty good to me, so good that I'm using my platform to recommend anyone starting a podcast, give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Coffee People podcast, which is part of the Roast West Coast Coffee Network and presented by Roastar Coffee Packaging. If you roast great coffee and you want to showcase it in a great looking package, go to Roastar.com to learn more. I'm Ryan Wolt, and this is the Coffee People podcast, where we meet interesting people from all corners of the coffee industry. Today I'm sharing some quick meet and greets from last week's Coffee Fest Anaheim. Industry conventions like Coffee Fest are an opportunity to meet with a ton of different people who work in all aspects of coffee, from packaging to green coffee sourcing and roastery buildouts. The Anaheim event was held in conjunction with the Western Food Service and Restaurant Expo, which is a long-winded way of saying hospitality. If there was an unofficial theme to the day, It was that the future is going to be filled with robots and plant-based foods. More than one robot server shared the aisles with those of us wandering around looking for bourbon barrel aged cold brew samples, which thankfully I found. I was there to interview visitors to the Hasea Coffee Source vendor booth. Brothers and co-owners of the Green Coffee Importing Company, Luke and Jared Hales, were there to meet potential clients, support their current ones, and just keep tabs on the pulse of the industry. For some reason, they invited me along for the ride. While you're listening today, you can head to Hasea Coffee to see all the green coffee they are currently offering and their upcoming coffee tasting and education sessions. Jared is a regular contributor to Roast West Coast with his monthly green coffee column, which is really good. I'm not a home or commercial roaster, but I always learn something new from Jared when we talk for the column. Also, you can and should check out RoastWestCoast.com. In this episode's post, I'll share links to the interviewees, as well as some details on my own experience at Coffee Fest. Right now, I'm ready to drink a coffee. How about you? I hope your coffee mug is full, because it is time to meet a bunch of new coffee people on this episode, recorded primarily at Coffee Fest Anaheim. My name is Bree McDonald. Um, I'm the roaster at Jaunt Coffee down in Mira Mesa. 
Um, I'm here at Coffee Fest just for personal networking, for business networking, because I love to get to see more coffee people and taste coffee. Um, and I love coffee in general just because it's exciting. It's, it's fun to get to taste something different in a different cup of coffee every time you try it and see what comes up and that's makes it pretty cool it's it's never there's never a dull moment in coffee for sure so speaking of trying coffee when you go to a coffee shop like john what do you order usually a pour over um if there's a natural or an anaerobic on the menu definitely one of those favorite origin being ethiopia generally but i've been really enjoying colombia's of late a lot of fun experimental stuff going on I'm actually going to be down by John next week or so. Oh, what should I order there? Ooh, we have a new Ube cold foam cold brew that like just rolled out this week. Supposedly really good. It looks really pretty too because it's got like a layer of purple foam on the top and then the cold brew. Or an affogato. We're so also doing those for summer. It sounds Instagram ready. Yeah, it's definitely That's Instagram ready. <laughs> Thanks, Bree. Sure, my name is Tyler Toms. Uh, I, uh, my, I'm with Percussive Coffee, and I do a lot of uh, roasting and education on the side as well. And I love coffee because it reminds me of being at home, which is my favorite place. And it's just comforting, and it's a bottomless pit of science and, uh, and knowledge left to be discovered. So um, what do I drink? I drink? I drink just about anything. My favorites right now are some Alita Naturals and Dragonfly Coffee Roasters. That's uh, I'm getting a lot of coffee from them and just want to plug them, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Where can people find percussive coffee? Uh, Bakersfield, California in the Central Valley. Awesome. Yep. Okay, my name is Leo. Uh, last name is Nie. I'm from China. My company's name is Regent Coffee. So the main reason I love coffee because it was my hobby and just gradually turned my whole life and myself so I just kind of like a fall in love with it since since like a eight years ago yeah that's how it started it just changed everything yeah Thank I learned you. from it too I love that yeah then my next question for you is when you go to a coffee shop what do you order all right simply I will grab a drip if I want a hot coffee if I want the iced coffee just cold brew ice Americano to check them out Dang. simple easy yeah you're, you're, uh, you have something very cool here at the show. Can you tell me what the bourbon cold brew concept is? So, it's a black coffee, and we developed during the uh, uh, during, during I mean, after a few years, we started just from like an experience from drinking other uh, uh, coffee business uh, barrel aged coffee, but it's been aged after roasted. Mm -hmm. It tastes really bad, actually, to be honest. Not fresh. And then we just had this idea why we just age the green coffee because we're a roaster. Uh, we age the green coffee and try it. And we've been liking Ethiopian personally. I mean, just like Ethiopian, my favorite coffee overall in general. So I tried that first. Uh, I bought a brand new barrel and we seasoned with whiskey. This idea we made up right away and turned out good, surprisingly. So the first try I succeeded. And now I've been just digging along with that path. We failed so many times with a different coffee still. So far, we only have five. So it's like a freshly brewed, freshly roasted, but aged uh, before that. Very cool. Yeah, so it's, it's really unique process and a fun process for, for, for drinking and making coffee. Well, very cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's start with uh, what's your name and your company? And yeah. uh, how did you end up partnered with Hasea? Uh, this is Matt with Golden Lantern Coffee Roasters. Uh, we have known Hasea for a couple of years. They're not only fantastic humans. Uh, Jared was a uh, friend in his previous coffee ventures. He was a, kind of a mentor before I even had a company. Uh, so when I decided to go full-time into coffee and kind of launch the business, you know, Jared was the first person I went to. He's been there uh, with guidance since day one. Um, so he's not only a fantastic, you know, he knows more about coffee than anyone I know, but he's also a fantastic human and friend. So a partnership with Isaiah just made sense from day one. Golden Lantern is located where? How can people find Golden Lantern? We are in South Orange County. Uh, so we live in South County in Laguna Niguel. We wanted to be in an area where we could grow. A lot of what we do is new to the community down in South Orange County. Uh, so you can find us at our roastery and tasting room in Laguna Hills. 
Uh, or you can find us on the web at Golden Lantern Coffee Roasters, you know, Instagram, Facebook, uh, GoldenLanternCoffee.com. Physical address for Roastery, 26072 Merritt Circle, uh, Suite 101 in Laguna Hills, California, 92563. <laughs> Most important question I have for yeah. you is when you go to a coffee shop, it's not your coffee shop. Right, right. What are you going to order? Espresso. I, I judge everything. I, it's not only been my go-to for years, but I judge a lot of places on how they treat espresso. Um, I, you know, came up with, like, old school, um, you know, some, some influences, like David Schomer, who a lot of people see as, like, the godfather of modern-day espresso. So that's the first thing I do when I go to a new shop. It tells you so much about a shop is how they're treating their espresso, if they're roasting, how they're roasting for espresso, what they're electing to serve. Um, there's just so much that goes into the preparation and the brewing of it. Uh, it is a totally beautiful science, and that's how I judge, you know, basically uh, the overall coffee or philosophy of a shop is how they're serving espresso. <laughs> well, I'll just ask you your name and the name of your company, and why do you love coffee? Like right now? Yeah. Oh, 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 my name. <laughs> That's pretty good. My name is Ben, Ben Wild. Um, and I have a company that uh, involves a couple employees and my wife, and my kids help out sometimes. It's two, two separate companies. I have a, a small importing company called Pacifica Renew. We're based, uh, we started it in the Bay Area, but then moved to LA. And then my, I have family in Southern Utah. So really, we operate out of a third-party facility in the Bay Area, and then we have our own space in L.A. that's small, and our own small space now in Utah as well. So we're just real small, import uh, just a handful of coffees that are the, our, our favorite specialty coffees for, with a few farms, and then sell them to roasters. But we also have our little roasting company in Chinatown, L.A., that uh, we, of course, roast our own coffee. And that's a, a growing little business where we wholesale to a couple of accounts, and uh, have our retail bags where we're uh, developing retail through our website as well. What is it about coffee that you love or that draws you to the industry? Uh, it's like the, a lot of it's the ritual. Like the even if you're buying the coffee, there's the ritual of you get it in, a, in a, a cup for here. The third wave and or specialty or whatever we want to call this aspect of the coffee industry is is, is to me something about the, the ritual of the experience. Uh, of course, when you're at home making a pour over or pulling espresso shots or whatever, it's even more of a ritual. And that's something I can do myself or I can do it with my wife or, or friends. And so I love the ritual of coffee production and consumption, you know, like making it and, and enjoying it and then sharing it with people. Very cool. And that's kind of what drew, drew us into it. When you are out on the road, say, between facilities and you stop to buy a cup of coffee or buy a coffee of some kind, what do you order? Well, actually, I, uh, it's easier nowadays, but when I first got into, I guess, third wave coffee in like 2011, it was really hard to find them. You know, it was like Verve and Intelligentsia and Counterculture, right? A couple, just a couple guys stumped down. So, but when I would go somewhere, I would look for anyone that carried them. I'd, I'd scour the Yelp pictures, anything, the signs that, oh, oh my gosh, they have a Malconic, they might have good coffee, right? And then I would plan my trip around the coffee shops, right? And then my favorite drink when I want a little bit of calories would be like a cortado so I can still taste the espresso if I want something that I can sip on longer if they make good pour overs I hand pour right um, so generally espresso is my favorite beverage but I love pour overs and then if I want some a little bit of milk convert my espresso to a cortado easy peasy that's it yeah cool all right yeah, my name is uh, Mateo. I'm from uh, Thoughts and Process Coffee. I'm a micro roaster out of Orange. And I uh, came here to Coffee Fest to brew some coffee with Hacia. I actually found them online, just Googling green coffee roasters locally. And I live in Orange. They're in Anaheim. It's literally a 10-minute drive from their warehouse to my house. So it's been really nice to have a green coffee roaster that's got so much attention we have answered questions uh they're willing to work with you any kind of size whether it's small two pounds to one pound to 65 kilo bags like they're willing to work with you and it's been great and jared has been a great help offering a lot of good advice and you know offering his own personal opinion with the coffee he carries so i've been really happy with, uh, using them for my green coffee source on that 10 minute drive between your house and the and the green coffee facility you stop and you get a cup of coffee what are you going to order for yourself uh, always uh, iced Americano. Uh, if I'm feeling a little bit too tired, I'll do a cold brew black with an extra shot of espresso in it. Very cool. What are you serving today? Uh, today I'm serving the Mexico Chipas. Uh, the 
Aquatic washed and their Guatemala Culotango, uh, uh, which has got a nice, really good, smooth flavor with a uh, slight malic acid and some. Uh, and the Mexico has got a nice honey and pear. Uh, when I roasted it, it's kind of light, a little bit more on the medium side, so it really brings out more of the honey for that Mexico coffee. So it's, it's been really nice. Yeah, my name's Lily, or Lil Coffee Geek on social media and everything, and I do coffee roasting and production consulting. So I kind of help those smaller roasters improve their roasts, improve their blends, and just kind of be more efficient with their processes. And when you are on your way here today, or tomorrow, let's say, you stop and you get a cup of coffee somewhere, what do you order? Ooh, that's tough. If it's somewhere I've never tried before, I'll usually go for a pour-over if they do pour-overs. Um, but if they only do batch brew, then I do a cap. All of the interviews on today's show were held next to the Hasea Coffee Source booth, except for one. In the next one, you'll notice a change in the background audio at the convention center. It was mid-afternoon on day one when I made my way over to the Mill City Roaster truck, which was pretty cool. I was really excited to see a few comfortable chairs in the back where I could take a quick break. I planned on maybe even sneaking in a nap, but instead I met Mill City's lead roaster who is also a member of the Mill City education team. Yeah, my name is Bryant Banker Scannell. Uh, here at Coffee Fest with Mill City Roasters, and I'm with the education team um, as a lead roaster at Mill City Roasters. Very cool. Uh, and then when you are when you were on your way here today, for example, and you probably stopped to get coffee, what do you normally order? Normally order is probably just like a cup of drip, solid cup of drip, and you know if they're doing a cortado um, or Gibraltar, whatever they're calling it these days, I will take that. Um, some, a nice dense espresso beverage and a nice cup of joe. I'm going to put you on the spot for one more question. Bring it on. <laughs> what sets Mill City apart? What sets Mill City apart? I mean, really the biggest thing is just like an emphasis on education. You know, we really believe that education behind roasting is kind of a staple in helping people move the needle to better uh, tasting coffee out of the roaster. And overall, just coffee should be fun. So really trying to break down those walls and marry the idea of like sensory analysis and like education about how to taste coffee so that you can make improvements in your roasting uh, because you can't hit a target you can't taste. I started day two of Coffee Fest by interviewing Double J. He's a coffee lifer, co-owner of Black Rabbit Service, a coffee equipment supply and repair company, and the face of Coffee Break, a new coffee television show. From there, it was back to the Hasea Coffee Source booth to meet a bunch more new coffee people. So all I need to know is what your name is, who you're working for here at Coffee Fest, and uh, why do you love coffee? Yep, uh, my name is Double J. I'm with Black Rabbit Service, and I. Why do I love coffee? Yeah. That, was that one of the questions? Yeah, that's the first question. <laughs> why do I love coffee? I don't. I've been doing it since I was a kid. My my family owned a coffee shop when I was a kid, and so I sort of grew up in it. And it's supported my family uh, for two generations now. So wow, that's, that's a, cool. Um, so then, when you go to a coffee shop, I assume you have high expectations. But what would you order? at a new place to you? What's my, my go-to drink? I usually get a shot of espresso and something else. Like I like to pick something off the specialty menu or you know, if they're doing something interesting, I like to, uh, to, to try that. So. Very cool. Uh, and how can people find Black Rabbit Service if they're not here? Sure, uh, blackrabbitservice.com. Uh, we do equipment service, sales, uh, tech support, all that good stuff. So we're based in Pacific Northwest in Southern California. And uh, we can help you out wherever you are. Very cool. That's it. Cool. My name is Nick. Uh, I roast with Legal Speed Coffee and Convenience. Uh, we've been around for about six years now. And uh, what I love about coffee, honestly, is the community. That's what I like. I like the people that we've met and and I still even though we roast I still love going to my local shop every morning and sitting and talking to people talking to the baristas talking to, to the owners of the cafes that's my favorite part when you show up at that shop what do you order 
So the local shop to me where I walk my dog every morning is called Play Coffee. And my favorite thing they do there is an espresso tonic that has like a kind of, it's got, there's some bitters involved, some orange zest involved. It's, it's real nice. My name is Frank Schipani and my coffee company's name is Three Hats Coffee. Okay, but your logo only has one hat. Yes. Why? Well, um, at the markets, when I meet my customers, I wear fedoras, and um, it was a little bit of emblematic there. But the name is called Three Hats, because uh, when I originally started, um, I set out to do this project uh, essentially on my own. I was roasting, selling, bagging stuff, online orders, literally every, everything under the sun. I was just kind of uh, doing it. And I wanted it to be almost as like a... Um, an inspiration for other people to essentially say, like, you know, if when you want to start something up, you just have to have a lot of grit and determination and do it. And I think having a good cup of coffee to get you started to do those things is, uh, uh, you know, a nice pair to the to the brand. If I said you had to say something nice about Hasea Coffee Source, what would it be? Well, for starters, the the people at Hasea are fantastic. And when I moved out to California, um, I'm originally from New York. The Hasea brothers put me under their wing and really helped expedite my, my learning curve for the back end of coffee, the coffee industry. They gave me like roasting fundamentals and kind of helped me navigate everything. So for someone who has no food and beverage experience and just coming in, they really uh, set me up for success and I'm super grateful for them to, uh, to be a part of uh, my, my company's journey and you know that's why I, I stand committed to them. Yeah. And they also source fantastic coffee. I mean, it's just ridiculously good. So you didn't even have to do it. You, you wanted to do that, it. Well, they helped take that hat off my head. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> one less hat. Yeah, it was uh, one less, that was one less hat, for sure. Where can people find Three Hats Coffee Company? You can find me at a local farmer's market uh, in Orange County or L.A. County. Or if that's uh, too far out of reach, you can find me at threehatscoffee.com. And three is spelled out, not the number three. My name is Lee Lazat. My coffee company is True Love Coffee Company. Very cool. And what do you love about coffee, Lee? Oh, the ritual. Waking up, brewing it, roasting it. Just the slower pace that off coffee offers. If you're not going to brew your own and you go somewhere, you stop on the side of the road at a coffee stand, what would you order for yourself? I love filter coffee. So filter coffee, um, espressos, uh, mostly filter coffee. And where can we find True Love Coffee? Daydream, Squirrel, Product Social, and online at trueloftcoffee.co. Perfect. We'll check that out. Cool. Thank you. So I'm Andrew uh, from Inflection Point Coffee in San Diego, California. And what do you love about coffee? I, it, it always starts a conversation. Like, I, I can't tell you, like, people, they just want to talk about their coffee. They want to talk about your coffee. They want to talk how they brew their coffee how it's processed it's it's a conversation starter like nothing else i just i love that about coffee it builds community well i know you've been growing if i want to try some good coffee as your t-shirt says where can i find inflection point all right so we're in four farmers markets around san diego you can find us at the mira mesa market the mission valley market the la jolla open air market or in the lucadia farmers market up in encinitas and online and online all right the internet <laughs> yes that too <laughs> Excellent. Super easy. Okay. Never so, done it before, so <laughs> now I'm all like jittery. I'm all you, ready. Yeah. All you got to do is let us know what your name is and the name of your company. And it's a really interesting company, so what is it that you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Matthew Bryce. I own Seven Sleepers Coffee Labs. And we train people who love coffee, who buy coffee in their local coffee shops, how to make it at home. Uh, we try and get it into the places where you work and the places where you love to drink your coffee. Very cool. And when you drink coffee, if you stop at a shop somewhere in the world, what is it that you're going to order? Usually black coffee. Yeah. I love coffee of all varieties, but usually a black cup of coffee, espresso, uh, occasionally a cappuccino. Perfect. That's it. Awesome. Oh, you know what? Let's wait. Uh, also, before I forget, how can people find out more about Seven Sleepers? That's a good question. Right now, <laughs> <laughs> right now we're just on Instagram, uh, and then I have like a, a, a business phone number and things like that. But Instagram's the best way, I think. So Instagram, 
um, at Seven Sleepers Coffee Labs. Uh, my name is Meg Le Vu and our company is Black City Coffee. And why do you love coffee? I love coffee for the self-reflection of it all. Yeah. That's a new one. Yeah. I mean, I know there's all the obvious ones, but uh, I think what surprised me about coffee when I got into coffee was like how much it taught me about me and I was like, what? Why? <laughs> I was a little like perturbed about it too, you know? That's Why really, am I learning about me? That's a really interesting take on it. I have not heard that before. Today at Coffee Fest, you are serving coffee at the Say a Coffee Source booth. What are you serving and why did you choose to serve this one? Yeah, I came to, it was actually a really hard decision. I was like, maybe I'll make a cool blend and my ego was, was there. And I was like, maybe I can make something cool out of something that's not cool, right, for me. And then I was like, <laughs> it didn't turn out good. <laughs> and I vlogged about it. And I told the whole world about it, and I was like, you know what? I I just can't serve it because I don't love it. Oh yeah. I don't love it. Versus like, I'll find moments where I'm like, I'm just I'm just gonna do what I do. Like I don't know. I found like more truth in it, and uh, it's always a reflection of me at the end of the day. And so I'm like, why am I not serving something that I love, that I always love? It's okay if they don't love it, and be prepared for that if they don't love it. And I was just going through this whole like thing personally, and then I'll talk about it on camera, which is nice because it's like going to therapy, and it's free. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's for free all therapy. the equipment and all the stuff and the coffee that you had to brew. Those are the those are the hidden fees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, for me, I was like, I gotta serve something that I loved. I've always loved. I know it would be a challenge to roast as well. And it took me four tries to get this one, so I've got my roast for right here for everyone to see. And it's not standard, which I love that too. I'm like, you know what? It tastes good, and that's what it is. If not that's the number, and, and then try to make the coffee with it. Yeah. So like, for me, it's always a a window into self reflection and uh, essence of uh, life, really. To me. And I like keep that on the down low, but like <laughs> I'll have these moments for me. And I'm like, cool, and then I'll I get to share it and they get to drink it and that's cool. But for me, I've gone through all this stuff <laughs> that I don't get to tell anybody about. And uh, that's that's why I love coffee. Very cool. When you stop at a coffee shop somewhere out in the world, you're just exploring, what do you order? I get a usually Americano or I get a pour over. I get their most basic cup because I want to see on a basic level what 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 you got going on because I don't want anything at don't hide anything from me because I feel like that's kind of how I am like with the channel I'm always like this is what I do I have no agenda this is just what I do and so I want to when I go to a coffee shop I want to see that if if possible. Where can people find your coffee or find your channel? How do they find out what it is that you do? Yeah, we're on YouTube and it's Black City Coffee Roasters. And you'll see me there with my face everywhere, <laughs> making mistakes and documenting it all. And uh, we're on Instagram, I'm always there too. Um, very active in the DMs and we're Black City Coffee Roasters. It's BLK City Roasters. As you can tell, it was a busy weekend. Some key takeaways. Coffee is an endless rabbit hole in which there are a multitude of meandering paths that lead in and out of the craft coffee community. I learned that people don't seem to mind talking to a stranger as long as he's holding a microphone. And if you're looking to be immersed in the world of coffee really quickly, an industry convention isn't a bad way to go. And if you can't make it to one, just go to roastwestcoast.com. It's like the internet's version of a convention. A special thank you to Golden Lantern Coffee Roasters, Thoughts and Process Coffee, Forge Coffee, and Black City Coffee for providing some great coffee prizes for our Guess the Beans Coffee Contest at the Hasea booth. And to all the lovely people who spent a few minutes chatting with this bearded coffee podcaster, it was a pleasure. Finally, to Jared and Luke Hales, I just have to say, you were excellent booth hosts and getting a chance to talk to so many of your clients, to hear the stories of why they view you as a partner, 
and how you've gone out of your way to guide when asked made me proud that you've chosen this podcast to partner with. Also, thanks for the fine pint of beer, that everywhere beer after the show. That was definitely needed. If you're listening and thinking about getting into coffee roasting, or you already are a home roaster or commercial roaster, head to HaseaCoffee.com to learn more about the company and about the green coffee they offer. Along with Hasea Coffee, we have a ton of great coffee partners, which include our Coffee People presenting sponsor, Roastar Coffee Packaging, and Ignite Coffee Company, Marea Coffee, Cape Horn Coffee Importers, Joe, it was great to see you at the show, Zumbar Coffee and Tea, Ascend Coffee Roasters, Mostra Coffee Company, Steady State Coffee Roasting, San Franciscan Roaster Company, Crossings Coffee, Ascento Coffee Roasters, Camp Coffee Company, Civets Roasting Machines, First Light Coffee Whiskey, and Coffee Cycle Roasting. Chris O'Brien, the owner and head roaster of Coffee Cycle Roasting, is my collaborator and coffee expert on the Coffee Smarter podcast. If you're trying to brew a better cup of coffee at home, you should go listen to that show too. Find it on RoastWestCoast.com or wherever you're listening to this show. Just search Coffee Smarter. If you find yourself on our website, RoastWestCoast.com, I think that's the fifth time I've said it in this episode, sign up for the newsletter so you don't miss any of these podcasts. This show is part of the Roast West Coast Coffee Network, and this episode is, was, has been written, produced, and recorded by me, Ryan Moore. Please always tip your baristas, and be sure to drink good coffee.